Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So we have a gentleman here that brought in a very interesting project to the Open Repair Workshop. I'll include a link to this down below where anybody can come in, get advice on whatever hardware project they have, some get to use the soldering station, microscope, and all that. So here we have something that is very familiar to my childhood, a PlayStation 2, and it is outputting messed up video. So let's show that over here. I'm just gonna put the capture screen on for the PS2 so you can see what it is that it is doing. Okay, as you can see, we get a black screen, a little bit of analog noise, but for the most part, there's nothing actually going on or happening here. Now, the original thing that I had suggested be done here did not actually work. I originally just took a look around the board because, again, I don't really have familiarity with this device since I have not used the PlayStation in 20 years, much less worked on one. What I was looking at was this chip over here that is right by the, I was about to say HDMI output, but that would be very obviously <laughs> wrong. The output. And I, what I did is I suggested checking every single one of these pins against a working board in diode mode to ground just to see if you get a different outcome. This is something that I do when I'm troubleshooting MacBooks on a regular basis. You'll put the red probe on ground. I'll have my little multimeter over here. The red probe on ground will go around to all of the different pins and I'll put this in a spreadsheet. I'll record the values that I'm getting on a working board at each pin in Excel and you'll compare this to the dead board and see where there's a difference. And there was no difference in this area. Now, he eventually found a video, which I will link down below, uh, that showed that there was a resistor network that sits between the Emotion Engine and the GPU on the other side of the board over here. So here you have, and this is a real piece of nostalgia for kids that grew up in the 90s here. This is a Sony Emotion Engine, baby. Is this 233 megahertz or 300 megahertz? I don't remember. I'm not sure. I think this is 200 megahertz. Either way, this is some old, old BGA tech right here. And over here you have what I believe is a graphics chip. And you have these networks of resistors that go between the graphics chip and the Emotion Engine. And you also have them on the other side of the board. Now, these resistors, according to the schematic that we were able to find, were, I believe, 47 ohms. So you'll see, as you go by, all of these are supposed to be about 47 ohms. But then you have a couple of them. Yeah, okay, 47.2, whatever, no big deal. Then you go over here, and you have 800,000 ohms. You go over here, and you get 47, 200,000 kilo, 200, ohms. 200,000 is a, very, a far cry. 700,000 is also a far cry from 47. Now, there are websites where you can order these resistor networks, or you could just buy a 47 ohm resistor that actually fits in there. Or if you have none of the above and you are a little bit of a risk taker, you can, as Sonny would say, jump it. So we're going to try jumping a couple of these and seeing what happens. Also, when it comes to the diode mode method of troubleshooting, if you wanted to get see which one of these was different, let's say you were working on a, on a known good board and a known dead board, you could put the red probe on ground, you could take your black probe, and you could go across all of these and you'll see differences. So you'll see over here, 0.343 on the messed up one. I should know, you have to go on the other side. It's from the other side here that is. So you get 0.468 over here, and then on the ones with a 47 ohm resistor is good, you get 0.382. So, so th this is wh where diode mode troubleshooting comes in really handy because you can compare a working board to a dead board very quickly by just going through all the points and all the different chips. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to put a little jumper around here. Again, this is not to be clear. This is not something I would do if this was a power line. I'm doing this because this, or something that was setting voltage for a power line or like a feedback for a power line or anything like that. I would not do this. Since this is a data line, I am not, a f I, I do not have fear that I'm going to destroy something as a result of this. So when you're jumping something, whenever you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, uh, there are times that you're allowed to and there are times that you can't and you have to use your best judgment here. So the first thing we do is we put some flux on the board. I'm going to go for a jumper. Now, remember when you, I am going to put a little bit of solder on the edge of this micro pencil tip here. All right, this is the fun part. Turn off the multimeter. So I'm going to tin the wire a little bit on this side.
This is a bit on the big side. I may go over there and grab some 48 or 50 gauge wire. This is, I believe, 36, which is just a little bit on the larger side for what I want to do here. This, and this is, just, again, just a little temporary hack until we get the proper resistor that we need for this. So once, it's, once that is attached, then I just pretend this is a paper clip, go back and forth, and break it off. What would have been smarter is if I had written down which resistors I need to do this to so I could do it all in one set, but I'm not exactly very smart. All right, so let's turn this back on. So let's see, the first one from the right we did. Second one from the right is good. Third one from the right is good. Fourth one needs to be redone. Okay, so the fourth one has to be redone. The fifth one needs to be redone. Sixth one needs to be redone. Okay, so four, five, and six. The fourth and the fifth and the sixth from the right. We are going to run a little jumper over. We're gonna go over the rest of them in a moment. All right, two, three, okay, this is the fourth. And here's where it's time to grab a smaller wire. Walk over to my coworker's desk and totally not steal his stuff. If he wanted his stuff to not be stolen, he wouldn't have left his desk. This isn't even the thinnest wire. Check it out. This is 44 gauge. You can. It, we ha we have all the way down to 54 gauge here. You sure you're handing me something? It's it's is that not ridiculous? Yeah, so the, for the outer one, I don't really care as much. For the inner one, like, I don't want these shorting and touching each other, so... Look, my tweezer doesn't even want to grab it. <laughs> yeah. That's how skinny this is. Thinner than my hair. Yeah, the 54-gauge one is definitely thinner than a hair. Okay, so we have two, three... Now remember, if you want to properly repair your PS2, you should stock your 23-year-old resistor. If you, do, if you, along with the other 99% of the repair shops in the country, do not have this exact resistor configuration, then you could try this right, right here. Now remember, this, is, this has an enamel coating on it, and the enamel coating is not going to conduct or attract solder, which is why I'm, I'm gently scraping it off. You see that? Like I'm moving the iron back and forth. That's not just my unsteady hands. Like, okay, well, some of it is, admittedly. <laughs> but it's also me, me just scraping off that coating as gently as I can. And if this works, I get to rip all these wires off so we can have our student here try it himself. <laughs> That's going to be the fun part. Okay, do this before. Now we go through the rest of them. Let's see if... So these all... I have Harry Multimeter Pro. Oh, this thing turned off serial. Harry multimeter probes, the bane of my existence. It's gross. Forty-seven. 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 One cool skill you'll develop over time is the ability to see the multimeter without moving your head. Your peripheral vision will expand a lot as you do this. 47, 47, 47.2, 47.5, 47, 47, 47, 47, Seven, forty-seven, forty-seven, 
37, and 600,000. Okay, so we go back to the 600,000 one. Now, here's one thing to take note of. You see how on the, once I get in focus, that, since I did not add flux, you have what I call a Hershey's Kiss looking solder joint where it, like it tops out at the end. That's not good. I mean, so I'm gonna retouch that up once I'm done with a little bit of flux to get rid of that. So when, when you put solder on the iron or on the, the point that you're soldering to, and you, all the flux gets heated away, that's the stuff that helps solder flow, you wind up getting shitty joints that look like that. And the way you deal with that is by adding your own flux onto the board like so. Don't let it become a bad habit to make joints without flux. There you go. Yeah, it may make sense to check the other group that we had on the other side. Also make sure that none of this wire stays on the board because you can't even see it. You can get that Amazon off of Amazon. It's made by Remington. I think you can also get it off of sites like Allspec. That's it. Forty-seven. 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 Forty-six and a nine. Forty-seven point six. Forty-seven point six. And again, we're not really sweating the forty-six point nine versus forty-seven point six kind of shit. We're, we're mainly interested in things where it's off by hundreds of thousands or hundreds. Like forty-seven point eight. I just we, that's just not a big deal. Forty-seven point eight. 7.8. What I'm personally surprised at is that a resistor fail that's essentially just passing data. Forty-seven point eight. Forty-seven point one. Forty-seven point one. Forty-seven point one. Two. Okay, that's a lower amount. Whew. Very clean looking board for how old it is. 47.9, 47 47.9, 46, uh, what's this? Oh, I'm touching different ones, whoops. 48.7. You know, the funny thing is this Component to HDMI output thingamajig actually has less analog noise than my piece of shit microscope camera that I'm using right now. See all those little lines going across the screen? I don't miss New York City, but I miss the microscope camera that I had in New York City. That was good shit. What was this again? Okay. Four seven. Four seven point eight. Forty nine. Well, okay. So I think we're ready to try and see if this actually works. This is the exciting part. Plug in the video first. Eh? Uh -huh. Sony Computer Entertainment Bay. That is a PlayStation 2. You could also take 47 ohm resistors if you want and like try to fit. I think you could probably fit 603s if you put them up on their side. If you can't buy that multi-thing resistor, you could just put 603 resistors on their side. 
I had a four. I had a two o or four o two. Maybe four o two. I have zero two zero ones, but they're not long enough to make it to the other side. Yeah, the resistors I have for the new MacBooks don't fit this at all because they're too small. Oh, you can't get to the menu. Uh, I tried to change the setting blind, but there there should be video that's being accessed here that's not there. After this, if there was no disk in the drive, it would ask me if I wanted to go to a menu or if I wanted to view the stuff in my memory card. There was the configuration menu and then the shit to look into my memory card so settings. It should have two options. There should be uh, like a browser and the system configuration option that it goes to, but it just goes to black. Maybe it needs to see something else plugged into it. Does it know that it has no CD drive? No, I tested this on a good one. It will, oh. it will get to that menu. Well, does it need a battery? It hasn't, this one has no battery plugged into it. That's just for the system clock. Oh. Let me turn this off so it doesn't burn the emotion engine. It's possible. It's possible. I mean, I'd have to reassemble it with the rest of the, uh, the drive to see. But, that's, I mean, that's definitely an improvement. Some progress. Do you want to try taking one of those jumpers off and running it on your own? Yeah, or? Sure. Well, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Check out the link down below if you're interested in bringing equipment by here. And uh, that is that.